Welcome to Epcot. In this video, I'm going to share a bunch of hints and tips to make sure you maximize your next trip to this park. If you've done the rest of the Disney parks or the Universal parks or probably any of the parks, this won't be a shock. Parking is expensive. Like, really expensive. Minimum $30. Upwards. Um, the good thing is if you pay for parking, it's all day. So if you switch between Epcot and Dis um, Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom, you don't pay again. So at least there's that. Um, but what you might want to do, if you're like me, because I'm getting old and my memory is terrible, especially at the end of the day, uh, in the app, there's a little uh, car locator thing where you go in there, press a button, figures out where you are, and it'll go, hey, are you in this row or this row? And then let your phone remember so you don't have to. Like all the rest of the parks, Epcot has a super zoom. This one is right underneath the ball. Kind of standing right there at the fountains. That's where you want to go if you want that super zoom shot. This is true for all the Disney parks, but also true here as well. If there is a restaurant that you want, book it in advance. Don't just gamble and rock up. You might get lucky, you might not. I'm sitting at Starbucks, that doesn't count. You can rock up to that whenever you want. But if you want one of the, the sit-down restaurants, I strongly recommend you book in advance. So there is one thing this park does that the rest do not, and that is different festivals. Right now, when I'm here, it's the Flower and Garden Festival, because, like, I got out here. See, look, they have like all these flowers and bushes and things. So that's one. They also have a food and wine festival. They have the festival of holidays and they have the festival of the arts. So <coughs> check out what's going to be on when you can come. If you live in the US, obviously you can come a lot more than those of us, a little bit more international. But you never know, you might have one of these festivals on your next visit. If you're going to do Soren, it is basically a flying theatre, big row of seats, massive giant screen. Uh, if you're at the top or you're at the bottom, you can see the top and the bottom of the screen. So you want to be in the middle. If you can, ask them for B2. B for Bravo 2. That's the best seat. There's quite a few rides in this park that are a little bit difficult to snag and end up with massive queues. One of them is Test Track. However, if it's also noisy. However, if you are on your own or you don't mind being split up, it does have a single rider queue. So uh, take advantage of that. It'll uh, be a little bit quicker for you. So, a little tip about this guy, mission space. Uh, if you are prone to motion sickness or you are claustrophobic, uh, there's two versions of this ride. One is the intense one, the original full on, centrifugal you know they spin you around you're pinned into it it's awesome but it's bloody intense if you've got a little bit of a sensitive stomach or you don't like actually if you've got a sensitive stomach just just go for the easy version the green one and if you're claustrophobic just don't do it at all because it's really really enclosed um it is a great ride it's very intense i don't have many limits that one pushes them so uh yeah just just be careful on that but the, the green one, I went on it earlier. There was a little kid on it. There was an elderly woman on it. Like, it's okay if you're not claustrophobic. Orange version, yeah. If, if you have got a very strong stomach, go on it, it is fantastic. If not, don't go near it. As with all the Disney parks, the park says it closes at a certain time. What they actually mean is the queues for the rides close at that time. So tonight, Epcot shuts at nine. I can sneak in a queue at 8.59. Make sure you get the most of your time. Look at that last ride in. So as always, the question is, what rides should you try and snag on Genie Plus and which ones should you rope drop? There's three in this park that are a bit of a nightmare to get. One of them is Frozen. One of them is Test Track. And the third one is Remy's Ratatouille. So, pick one. Lightning lane it. Pick another one. Leg it. Good luck with the third one. So I mentioned earlier that if you want uh, to do any of the sit-down res restaurants, strongly recommend reservations. This guy, Space 2020, uh, nope, Space 220, is definitely one to consider. It is insanely themed, um, fantastic theming. It is very pricey, the menu is maybe a little quirky, so if you are a little fussy, it might not be your taste. 
check the menu out, you 100% need to reserve for that. You cannot walk up, it just does not happen. But if you like unique experiences and you have a very varied palate, get it booked. So if you're staying on site, a little tip to consider. Florida gets hot, very, very hot. So if you're staying on site, come for early opening hours when it's quiet and you know you can skip all the queues. Head back to your hotel when it hits kind of middle of the day and it's ridiculously hot and ridiculously busy. And then come back in the evening. That way you're here for the quiet periods and you're not stuck in the Florida heat. So this guy, Guardians of the Galaxy, this is one of the newer rides. It is definitely my favorite ride in this park. Possibly my favorite in the entire Disney Resort, although Tron is definitely up there. Um, but you cannot just walk up to this and get on it. That is not how it works. You have two choices. One, you pay some money. It's about 20 bucks a person. Um, you won't be disappointed, it is fantastic. Your second option is a virtual queue. Now, the problem with the virtual queue is if you're a resort guest, you can do that at 7 a.m. and you need to be on the app at 6.59 because they go really quickly. If you're not a resort guest, you can only do it at 1 p.m. if you're in the park. We got here today, it was completely sold out, virtual queue was done, there was no chance we were getting on it. There is a third option, again if you're a resort guest, sometimes if they've got a late opening they'll do a 6 o'clock virtual queue. Um, but it's such a good ride, if you are a resort guest you're probably going to want to do both. It is fantastic, some people suffer with, say they suffer with motion sickness on it. I know people who get motion sickness on rides who are totally fine with that one. Um, so just be careful of that, but it is spectacular. They've done an absolutely fantastic job, and you want to try and get on it. Is this a park worth getting Genie Plus? Mm, that's a tricky one. There are four attractions here that it is very useful for. Well, three really. You've got Test Track, you've got Ratatouille, and you've got Frozen. Fourth one, Guardians. It's either Virtual Queue or an individual lightning lane. So you're not using Genie Plus for that one. The other three, however, are really difficult to snag. You can obviously pick one up at uh, seven o'clock when the lightning lane's open, but then you've got to wait till 11 o'clock before you can get your next one. Uh, now I've managed to get all four of them. Did test track the other day though, so that probably doesn't count. I did manage to get all three of the other ones today, um, but I'm going to Magic Kingdom later on. So you are going to get it for here it's probably worth getting the multi-park it's only a couple of dollars extra um it's really not much for more uh and obviously magic kingdom tends to be open till really late so you can get a few things done in this park then you can hop over at magic kingdom you can book some lightning lanes from here as well so i've booked two or three for magic kingdom already so that when i get over there i just walk on some stuff so is this park alone worth it it's a tricky one, but if you're planning on hitting up a couple of parks, then yeah, I'd say go for it. And uh, make sure you study how to use it though. It's not the most obvious thing for first timers. There are tons of videos out there that will explain how it works. So I'm not gonna try, but uh, it's complicated at first and you do need to understand it. So watch some YouTube videos before you go. Another thing to note, cause you know, Florida is hot, like can be silly hot. You're gonna need to stay hydrated. Little tip, if you go up to any of the stands or shops, well, stands, sp stands specifically, or Starbucks, if you ask for a cup of water, it is free. If you ask for a water, you'll get a bottle and you'll pay for it. Make sure you use the word cup, it makes a difference. I hope you found those tips useful. If you have, hit that like button, share it with a friend. Um, also, I'm trying, trying to hit 10K, so uh, click the other button too. I have been Chris, you've been watching Coaster Dad. See you in the next one.